Kia ora koto katoa, no mai haida mai, ki te whare, whare wānanga o otāko uh, ko Marcelo Takawingo. My name is Marcelo, an associate professor here at the Faculty of Law at the University of Otago. I'm in the convener of education and it's my great pleasure uh, to be with you here today. I just keep sort of quieting down, really keen for this to start, um, so we'll get underway. Um, greetings to those of you here in this, this mighty lecture theatre, Castle One. Greetings uh, to those of you who have packed out Castle Two uh, next door. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, um, but we are there uh, beaming uh, to you live. I'm joined today um, with some very special guests. Uh, to my right, your left, uh, is Associate Professor Edward Willis, um, a relatively new hire here at the University of Otago, but very accomplished uh, that he is. He's going to be talking to you later on um, about how law works at Otago in the first year. Uh, and two very wonderful uh, students, uh, Sana Vitalis uh, and Lydia Joseph, um, both uh, shining examples of, of, of who you could become if you did decide to become uh, a student here at the University of Otago and you made the even better decision uh, to take on law. Um, it's really, really great to have you here with us. I know that some of you have traveled uh, a long distance to be here today. Um, and we've greeted you with 20 degree weather and at least six food trucks. Um, and so we've really pulled out all the stops. Um, but you're learning a lot about lots of different subjects, about health sciences, about economics, about any sort of program that is offered here at the University of Otago. And we wanna spend some time to you to tell you why uh, we think that the best decision uh, is to pick a law degree. So, first we're gonna talk about what law is all about. I got two aims today. Uh, first, I wanna sell you on the law and why you should study it. I don't really even care where you do it, you know? I just want you to study law, because I think it's great. I've been doing it for a while now, and boy, am I hooked on it. I think I can hook you on it as well. We'll see that in a second. If you can, you know where the exits are. But two, if you like the law, I'll sell you on why you should do it here in Autoporti, Dunedin. Why the University of Otago is just the, one of the best places to study law. I think that'll become very clear as to why we can offer something a little bit different, different than New Victoria, different than New Auckland. They're all very, very fine law schools, but something at the University of Otago is different. Something that offers you a really unique experience within law school. And we'll go through that as well. So two things, law and then law at Otago. Let's get it underway. And we can start by doing some work, because I don't know how these other presentations have gone, but presumably, or hopefully not in health sciences or something like that, they're not actually asking you to operate on patients. Um, in economics, they're not asking you to do whatever they do in economics. But in law, we can actually, in this room, do some legal work. I'm gonna ask you some questions. We're gonna get through it. It's gonna be fantastic. Maybe, again, you can vote with your feet if you don't like it, but I think that you're gonna like it. And this is why, because at the University of Otago and in your legal studies generally, we talk about a lot of different things because the law is with us everywhere. It is something that permeates every single facet of society. Everything that you've done today will have some legal aspect to it. So the way that you got here today, for example, maybe it was by bus, maybe it was by car, maybe it was on foot. There are rules of the road, there are rules of pedestrians, there are all sorts of things that will govern how you got here today. That food truck that you uh, had at lunchtime, maybe got a dodgy kebab or something like that, there are food healthy standards that will sort of help out with that sort of thing, yeah? And there are, every single uh, aspect of your life is going to be governed by law in some particular way. And given that you are, for the most part, um, all wonderful, uh, healthy high school students, uh, I thought a very good example would be the way that law impacts uh, your rights and responsibilities uh, within school. And so this is a real life example, something that happened to poor old 16 year old Lucan Batterson. Now Lucan, dashing young man that he is here, this goes all the way back down to 2015. He was enrolled in a school uh, called St. John's, uh, which is a school in Hastings in the North Island. Now, Lucan is not just your average uh, year 12 kid. He is a remarkable young man. Um, all excellences within uh, his, his studies, uh, 
but in addition to that, member of the first 15 uh, rugby club. Uh, more than that, he's a lifeguard and was uh, given a medal for bravery for saving two people's lives when they got caught in the surf. He is a model student uh, and the High Court of New Zealand in one of their decisions recognized him as a, quote, very nice young man. Imagine a judge saying that about you. Yeah, I can't imagine it either. But nevertheless, this guy is a good dude with one problem, a new principal. And that principal comes to the school. Um, he is ready to make his mark, as principals tend to do. I'm sure that there might be one or two in the audience. No disrespect or disrespect, depending upon um, your views on that. Uh, he comes along and says, I want to make a mark. And I think the standards at St. John's have slipped. He goes along to a rugby game, sees Lucan playing, and he notices one thing about Lucan that he does not like. He does not like at all. And you might be able to tell what he doesn't like here. That sweet man bun. He does not like the length of Lucan's hair. He says it's too long. And this isn't just his impression. He says that this is a breach of the school uniform policy, which says that hair has to be short, tidy, of natural color. And hair must be off the collar and out of his eyes. Extremes, including plaits, dreads, and mohawks, because they belong in the same sentence, are not acceptable. He says, you've broken the rules. You have to cut your hair. And so the principal says to Lucan, cut your hair. And his teachers say, cut your hair. And what does Lucan say? No, I'm not going to, because I'm year 12 in this school, and not a single person has asked me to cut my hair until this point, and it's always been this length. I keep it off the collar here. Look at me in a suit. I look great. This is not a breach of the rules. You just don't like long hair, but I'm keeping it tidy. I don't think it's a breach of the rules. I don't think I should have to cut it. And so what happens? Well, the principal says, cut your hair. And his teachers say, cut your hair. To the point where a teacher, true story, gets so annoyed she bursts into tears over this. Please cut your hair, she says. And he remains resolute and says no. Now, in a situation like that, you can say he's courageous, but usually in situations like that, ah, the student doesn't tend to sort of win, doesn't tend to get much out of that, and eventually they have to comply. Well, Lucan wasn't taking these sorts of directions at face value. He gets more and more annoyed, and so does the principal. And eventually, the principal and the board of trustees at the school say that this is starting to get really serious, and so they consider suspending him. And so this little excerpt up here is section 14 of the Education Act 1989, which was the legal power that the principal was given by Parliament to suspend or stand down students when they break the rules. And so the principal says, I think that you have broken the rules enough. I think the fact that you consistently say no to us is a problem, and therefore I am deciding to suspend you. And he does. And Lucan gets kicked out of St. John's. And now, at that point, surely you'd say, oh, just go to a different school, dude. But he likes St. John's. His friends were there. He'd spent all of his high school education there. And he knew, or at least he wanted to believe, that he was right, that he hadn't actually broken the rules. And so Lucan Battinson, who is exactly the same age as you, along with his mum, decide to essentially sue the school. And the way that they can do this, this is the area of law that I practice in. So does uh, Associate Professor Willis as well, actually. This idea about limiting public power. We have all sorts of public institutions in this country, some very big, some very small. But the idea is, is that they operate and exercise their power conditionally. They can't go beyond the scope of their power. If they do, they're acting really beyond those limits and they're acting without legal authority. And because of that, the courts can sometimes step in and ensure that they're actually staying within the limits of their power. And that's what Lucan was saying here. He said that the principal went beyond his legal authority because he was principal of a public school, he wasn't able to do that. So what do you think? 
Should Lucan be able to keep his hair that long? More particularly, did the principal have the power to suspend Lucan? This is the point where I ask for some willing volunteers to give me their views as to whether or not this is the case. You can put your hand up and be a hero now or else I'm gonna start picking people. Oh, we have our first hero right at the back, sir. What do you think? No. No, the principal didn't have the power? Okay, and why not? Right, it's short and it's tiny. So this is the idea, I'm just gonna fill in the blanks for you, sir, that he actually was complying with the actual rule. He hadn't done anything wrong. So that's the sort of specifics of, well, look, I'm actually following the, the rules. And therefore, what about this sort of power? You can see sort of section 14 here. The principal can stand down or suspend a student if, if, if the principal is satisfied on reasonable grounds. What about that, that legal power to do that? Madam. This is the law student mentality, folks. This is fantastic. Well done, madam. This is what we call statutory interpretation. And statutes might seem boring and fussy and old and that sort of stuff, but they can relate to man buns, folks. They can be interesting. They can be relevant just like this. Very nice analysis. Is this example, this growing your hair long, a harmful or dangerous example to other students at the school? Ugh, that starts to sound a bit dodgy. Now, the principal comes back. What could the principal say in response to that? It's not so much the length of the hair that was setting a problematic example. What was, what was the, the behavior of Lucan after he was cut his, uh, asked, to, asked to cut his hair? What was the problem with that? Disobedience is always like someone like Boomer Age, who sort of yells out at this point, no disrespect, sir, disobedience. Should have bloody well comply with the bloody principle. Can't believe it, cut your damn hair. Absolutely, I'm not projecting anything onto you, sir. You're just a use of foil at this point. But yeah, disobedience. Maybe that's the harmful or dangerous example. But is there a response to that? Certainly, yep, madam. It's totally subjective. So maybe he was right if we put these two arguments together, yeah? Yeah, maybe you should stop calling your friend short, but sure, absolutely. <laughs> Give her a bit of a complex. Um, but nevertheless, you're right, it is a subjective term, hey? So these arguments in the central here, he wasn't actually in breach of the rule, combined with this idea that he wasn't actually setting a harmful example, and maybe disobedience when you might be in the right isn't really much of a harmful or dangerous example here. Maybe the idea of actually resisting power in that regard and actually sort of standing up for your rights is actually less a harmful and dangerous example and actually a pretty exemplary one. School is tough. You are confined with lots and lots of rules that put you in a particular uniform and make sure that you're in a particular place from 9 till 3.30 p.m. every day. That there is a legal requirement that you're at school. That's remarkable, but that doesn't mean that you don't have rights. And Lucan here had a right to be treated appropriately. And the principal had to be satisfied on reasonable grounds that his act of growing his hair and then saying that that was within the rules constituted a harmful or dangerous example. Otherwise, he wasn't allowed to suspend him. He wins, Lucan. He wins in the High Court. And the High Court says, you were well outside of your authority here, Principal. You had no capacity to suspend Lucan because he refused to cut his hair. He does something else, though. He says that this rule is problematic. Now, this builds on your point, madam, about why, why it being subjective. Why is that a problem? 
Why is the subjectivity a problem when we talk about rules like this, when we're going to apply them? Lack of certainty. I like that. Bang on, madam. Absolutely. If we don't know what rules are and what they can mean in any particular circumstance, people continually say that my hair is too long, for example. It changes on circumstances. It's completely subjective. It's uncertain. That means it can't be applied consistently. And so the judge not only says that the suspension of Lucan was illegal, he says that this rule is illegal too, and strikes down the rule, which goes to show two things. One, that we constrain public power according to law in New Zealand, and two, students like you have the power to challenge those decisions. And that's what law is all about. As I said, law permeates every aspect of society. And a law degree helps you understand why that's the case and help others to understand why that's the case. So throughout your four or five degrees uh, at law school, you will learn consistent skill-based knowledge as to exactly how to interpret law, to really get excited about statutes, to get really excited about cases, but more importantly, understand how they impact real people in real-world situations. And after you graduate, that allows you to actually help people, help people like Lucan, who had and needed a lawyer. So we want to get into some specifics here about exactly how this all works. So I'm now going to take you over to Associate Professor Willis, who is one of our excellent teachers of uh, Laws 101. And he's going to talk to you about exactly how that first year program works. Uh, kia ora koutou. Oh, yep, you can hear me. That's fantastic. Um, as Marcelo sort of mentioned um, when he was introducing us all, I'm a relatively new hire here at Otago University. The university really knew what they wanted when they were picking me, so they essentially ran Marcelo through the photocopy at 125%, and I'm what came out. So we have a system here, and it works for us. I'm here because I'm in charge of uh, the first year law paper. Um, in fact, I'm teaching it at three o'clock straight after this lecture. So if you like, if you can find your way over to St. David, usually only half my class turns up, there were heaps of seats, pop in for a while, see what it's like. Um, it'd be great to have you there. I, we've, we've revamped the paper, which is part of the reason I really want to talk to you, because we're trying to make it relevant for modern people in a modern society. First thing we thought is, we need to give it a really exciting name. It's got to capture the imagination. So we called it Laws 101, <laughs> and we thought that really captured the essence of what we're trying to achieve. Um, we do a bunch of things in that course. We do the sorts of things Marcelo has been talking about, statutory interpretation. We look at the way legal power is formulated through a very exciting medium, words. And we study those words in detail. And to be perfectly frank, sometimes it's a little bit boring. Law touches every facet of society. Uh, learning about these things in the abstract can be boring. Seeing them in practice can be really exciting, and that's where you really make a difference. The other things we do is we look at case law. Again, doesn't sound very exciting on its face, but we look at the way courts have made legal rules over time and have channeled legal power in a very different way. Um, we look specifically at criminal law, uh, public law, which is the sort of law we've just been talking about, and the law of obligations, things like contracts and torts, so you get a real feel for what law actually does in various areas. Um, and there's two things that I really want to mention, actually three. I'll start with the third one first. Um, I have to mark all your papers, so if you actually don't feel like doing law, it's fine. Lower numbers is good for me, so that's great. Um, maybe go to Wellington, that's cool. That's, I understand it's a perfectly good law school. Um, number two, we have some really amazing lecturers in Laws 101. I mean, I'm there too, but you also have people who are the best in New Zealand and sometimes even the best in the world at what they do. You are exposed to brilliance from day one. Um, hopefully some of that will reflect off you. Um, and number three, we've really focused in on this law and practice idea. So in addition to standing in front of you and lecturing at you like this, which is not the most exciting way we can communicate these things, um, we have tutorials where you sit down with senior students and they help you work through actual problems. 
And we have a, a program which is unique here at Otago, which is what we call workshops, where you take a break from sitting in lecture theatres and you sit down with actual academics and you work through how to structure legal arguments and understand the power dynamics involved, understand the social implications, and understand what it means to be a human being caught up in this system of statute and case law and tikanga and all the things that make our system function the way it does. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. It is an excellent lecture. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Turn out like you're not used to it. Do gets a lot of claps because he deserves them. This is a dynamic and interesting year. But here's the secret. Even if you're not sure about whether or not you want to become a lawyer, even if you're not sure if you really want to do a law degree, 101 is a zero risk proposition. Everyone should take Laws 101 because you understand what the legal system looks like, where we get law in New Zealand, how it works, and you get to have uh, Associate Professor Willis as a lecturer. But if you don't want to continue with law after that, you don't have to. The whole point of 101 is that it is basically one paper, one full year paper that you take throughout, but then you take other non-law papers alongside it. You want to continue with arts and drop law completely? Go for it. You want to focus on science instead? Didn't really sort of get taken by law. That's fine. There is no risk and it adds points, as you will soon realize, points are very important, points to your overall degree. But what it will give you, even if you don't continue with a law degree, is an understanding of exactly how our legal system works and some exposure to some really interesting ideas. It is a very good proposition for every student to take. And very much unlike something like health sciences, for example, not to bag them at all, but you have to take six or seven papers as part of that first year health science degree. You don't get much choice. One paper is all we're asking at law, in, in law. And that is an amazing paper for everybody to take, and we couldn't recommend it enough. But if you love law, and you will, uh, then I want to talk to you about what happens next, because we're actually on the cusp of something special here at Otago at the moment. And we've got one of our, uh, not so new actually, uh, but extremely prestigious uh, senior lecturers here, Matidia Tude, who you might remember from her past life as being an uh, incredibly important mana wahine, um, uh, wahine tōra within New Zealand. Uh, and she, along with her colleagues, have created a very special program that begins in second year. Now we can go into exactly what you require and how it works to go from first year to second year. That's the big leap. It's open entry in 101. We'll take everybody and anybody. We love that diversity, but we have to shrink the class down in second year. And that ends up being sort of about one and two students sort of get through according to the marks if they want to sort of continue. But if you got into second year, um, according to your mark on 101 and a bunch of other sort of criteria, uh, then we've got something special. Because second year has always been a bit interesting in New Zealand, and this is our first point of difference, I think, from other law schools throughout the country, where it's an immersion year. You don't take any other courses, you don't take any other papers from your other subjects. We basically mainline some foundational legal subjects to you for the full year. And just like learning a language, it's really important if you want to speak uh, French to maybe spend a year in, in France. Uh, and we know that if you want to speak uh, really fluent today, or then Kohanga Reo was probably the place for you at the first instance. Immersion really works, and we think that that works for the law as well. And so we focus on law in second year, but just this year we have started doing something a little bit different. And I wonder, Matidia, if you would be able to, to talk to us about exactly what's going on there at the moment. Tēnā koutou katoa e mihinu ki a koutou, a ko mitiria tūre a hau no ati hau nui a paparangi, mi nāti kahununu ki wadrapa, a he pūkina mātoa o mātā pono Māori me mātou ranga tūre. Um, oh, kia ora koutou, nice to see you all. Um, so I am a senior lecturer here and um, I teach into the jurisprudence paper in year three and I teach uh, Māori law and philosophy. Um, in that paper. 
So uh, I will see, I'm sure, lots of you in that paper in time to come. But there are stages that you need to go through before you get to, um, to my paper. And this second year, wānanga, te mātauranga, ture o te Māori, is a really critical step in that journey. From 2025, every law student in the country in every law school will be required to learn mātauranga Māori, uh, mātāpuna, Today, so Māori laws and philosophies. And that means that every stage of the law degree, we will be introducing you to that material at Laws 101 with Ed and with uh, Professor Jacinta Rudu. You saw her standing next to John Key. Um, she has won teachers awards. She's a distinguished research fellow. She, she teaches into Laws 101 and a lot of the material that comes from the Mātauranga Ture. That's her there, she's amazing. So her and I and Mihia Tapirini uh, form Korpu. Korpu is the Māori research collaboration that we have here, legal research collaboration, that does a lot of this work. Right, and good intro, okay. So, the second year wānanga. The wānanga that we started this year is seven full immersion days in the first seven days of year two. Uh, where we take you on a deep dive into Māori law, Māori philosophy, tikanga Māori. Uh, we take you to Otako Marae, which is what you can see here, where we do work on Māori uh, legal decisions, so decisions that come out of the Māori Land Court, out of the Supreme Court, out of the High Court, on how tikanga Māori, te tiriti o waitangi and the principles all contribute to the way that New Zealand law is developing. Because we're in this exciting phase at the moment, exciting phase in the law, where the law is starting to really understand what tikanga Māori as a set of legal principles can contribute to the development of our law. And so when we are working with you over the next few years, you will be right at that cusp of the development of a new area of law in Aotearoa really will be new. And so it's a really, really exciting time to be doing this. And we're really pleased that at second year Wānanga, we can actually take you out away from the lecture theatres and take you out to understand what Māori law is like in place. What is Māori law like at Otako, working with mana whenua? What is Māori law like if we go to Araituru, which is the marae here in the city in Dunedin? What is law, how is it different? if you're not in a mana whenua marae, but you're somewhere else. And all of these things are the work we do with you during that wānanga. We bring a whole lot of other lecturers with us, so it's not just me and Jacinta and Mihiata who work with you, but other lecturers from, um, from the faculty. Uh, we have Te Whai Pūtake, um, the Māori Law Students Association. They come out too and do a lot of work. So we're engaged with Mihi, we're engaged with Waiata, with Karakia, with Māori Law, with Tikanga Māori, with Pōwhiri, um, pura, pura Puraki, all of these processes. So you get this deep dive into understanding Māori and Māori Law in second year. And then in third year, you come to me uh, for Juris and we go through another deep dive into it. This is the new way that law will be taught in Aotearoa from 2025. And we're very excited at Otago that we've done, we're starting with the second year wānanga like this. It's unique, no other universities do this. Um, and we're very, very proud of the work that we've done and of our students, our tauira, who've really engaged with this new way of thinking and learning about the law. So, kia ora. Kia ora. So as Matidia indicated, this is a requirement of all law schools, but it's Otago that's seizing the bull by the horns and really sort of engaging with this, and it's really, really exciting. I had the privilege of going along to Otako Marae to really see how the Wananga was operating and seeing the students there, they loved it. I've never seen a more cohesive and inspired second year. It's really exciting times here at Otago and Otago Law specifically. And that's all about Yako to to learn, to teach, to study, to advise. We want to put this throughout our whole curriculum throughout law school. Now, as Matidi indicated, once you get beyond second year, you are allowed to diversify again. And boy, do we have a lot of specializations that we can offer you here uh, at Otago Law. A really rich degree and array of some of the most uh, amazing experts in their legal fields. 
We have folk that can dedicate themselves to law and a democratic process. If you listen to Morning Report and they know high school students that you're big RNZ listeners. And you will hear Andrew Geddes uh, most mornings talking about um, which MP has jumped uh, from their particular party today and the legal implications uh, of that. We have some of the most foremost experts uh, in the Treaty of Waitangi. We have remarkable uh, international law scholars. We have uh, the foremost expert in New Zealand on, on tax law. We have basically an array of experts that are at the top of their fields teaching you their specialists, uh, specializations and, and helping you decide what kind of lawyer you'd like to become. But it's not just law. And this goes back to a sort of a point that I was making earlier, that it doesn't just have to be a, a a complete sort of diet of law in your first year. You get to take other subjects as well. In fact, you have to take other subjects, whether or not they are from commerce, art, science, or what have you. And this is reflected in what we see at our law school. There's only 9% that are doing a straight degree. Most people are combining degrees with uh, other degrees. So for example, I did an arts degree here at Otago many years ago, philosophy, politics, and economics. Friends of mine did commerce degrees. We have some terrific scientists that are combining their legal studies with scientific studies as well. It's an amazing complement to your legal studies. It allows you to be as diverse as possible, allow yourself, uh, allowing yourself to apply your skills from one degree uh, to another. But I want to really sort of focus now, I think, on exactly why Otago is different. Because for the most part, what I've talked about is why you should do law. It is an amazing way of seeing the world. Honing your skills, research, analytical, communication, becoming a valued member of your civic community, an incredible degree to take. But you can do that at Vic, and you can do that at Auckland. So why would you do it at Otago? One word, community. Because, you know, you've been wandering around the campus today. Good luck wandering around the campus in the same way at Victoria or Auckland. Fine universities top of their game, remarkable scholars. But the community that we build here, that Otago is famous for, is reflected within our law school as well. And that's what really sets us apart. When we talk about student groups, we just don't talk about a couple of people who are sort of engaging in sort of, sort of fringe activities. They are a core part of the way that we see our law school. Uh, our main and longest running uh, organization is Souls, the Society for Otago University Law Students, which puts on not just a bunch of incredibly good sort of social events, uh, but also all sorts of legal education clinics um, assisting you throughout your degree. And then we have specialist groups who are doing an amazing job at not only representing their particular demographic, but also advancing the goals of that demographic within law school. No better than Toropu Fai Putake, who uh, celebrated their 30th anniversary just a couple of weeks ago, who have been doing the sort of money that Matidia has been referring to and are an integral part of uh, Kopapa here at Otago. New organizations, the Pacific Island Law Students Association, Otago Asian Student Law Association, and Pride in Law Otago have made their mark and are fundamental parts of our law school community. And they are an indication of just the, the level of camaraderie, companionship, togetherness that you'll find here um, at Otago Law. An important part as well of what we see here at uh, Otago is this idea of utu, which sometimes has a pejorative connotation but actually means this idea of repayment reciprocity, giving back. And that's why we also make a really important um, emphasis on acting within the community. So I referred to Souls earlier, they have a tenancy program that helps non-law students work out their way through flatting issues, bad landlords and so forth, helping them out with free legal advice. We have the Public Interest Law Network, which is all about trying to uh, make things better within the community, uh, acting for not-for-profits and acting for people in the community and helping them out. Ignite, which is an also a, more of a business, business advisory service uh, for not-for-profits, and Law for Change, looking at various sort of social issues within um, New Zealand and acting on, on that by writing to Parliament uh, and, and getting involved, as well as sort of important organizations such as the Community Law Centre, uh, 
we are out there in the community really giving back. We have the Naitahu Māori Law Centre as well, police observation schemes, we ride along in a police car just to see exactly how the law looks like at the front end, and the prison visits at the back end as well. Really sort of getting involved within our community, making you see exactly what law looks like on the ground. And competitions, it's not all hard work, there's also some fun in it as well. Otago is, some of, is full of some of the most highly performing law students throughout the world. And I say that with hand on heart, knowing that because I've got one right here. Lydia Joseph was part of, this is her right here. She's grinning because she was just made 17th best team in the world in a mock trial, a mooting competition in Washington DC just three weeks ago. She beat the likes of Harvard she beat the likes of many other Ivy League schools within the States. Otago is performing at extremely high levels throughout the world uh, and showing forward. And I, I wonder if we can get you to say a couple of words about your experience, Lydia. By the way, any Columba woman in the, in the house? Columba old girl, you could be like her. Fantastic, Lydia, take it away. Um, yeah, so. I don't know if anyone knows what mooting is. It's where you kind of dress up and pretend to be a lawyer in a fake court. Um, so yeah, I didn't come to university thinking I'd be a mooter, but that's exactly what I am. And um, yeah, we didn't realize when we won the Otago University mooting competition that that meant we could end up in Washington DC. Um, but Joseph, um, the guy in the middle, he was my teammate and we went up to Auckland and we did the national competition where we bet all the other law schools. Um, and then we spent kind of six months preparing for this really intense competition in Washington DC. So it was um, attended by 700 law schools and it was only based on international law because that's the only law that every law school in the world teaches kind of in the same way. So we had this fake scenario where there was three countries at um, war with each other. And so yeah, we spent our summers learning about international law and then got to go to Washington DC and argue about it. So yeah, if you're if that sounds vaguely interesting to anyone, then come to Otago. Um, there's a compulsory moot that everyone that does a degree at Otago um, does in their third year, I think. And then we have a junior and a senior uh, mooting competition. So yeah, there's a lot of different opportunities to give things a go. Thanks, Lydia. Remarkable young woman. And the thing is, law firms tend to like these sort of people, these clever, committed, engaged, and enthusiastic, charismatic young people. They tend to like them. That's why Lily has been snapped up by New Zealand's premier law firm, along with Joseph actually going to the same firm, Chapman Trip, uh, in Wellington. A, a remarkable uh, success for Lydia, but success that is available to all of you here. Why? Because of the community that you find here uh, at Otago. A remarkable set of opportunities. If you don't like to eat them, then bugger off. Go on exchange. This is something that has been on hiatus for the last couple of years for obvious reasons, and it's been a sad thing because it ends up being a really important part of many law school students' uh, careers. A semester abroad in a completely different legal system, still learning the law, but experiencing another culture and broadening your horizons as a result. We have a lot of sister universities throughout uh, the world that really uh, offer an enriched and enhanced experience that you don't have to sort of sub in and it's not particularly sort of onerous to do it. In fact, it slots in right within your legal studies here. Don't want to pay their fees? Well, you don't have to. You pay Otago fees while you're around and there are scholarships to help you get there. It's an amazing opportunity and our exchange office is running a, a high opt-in campaign to do that. Well, where does Lord at Otago take you? Before we answer this question, I want to turn to our other very important student here as well, Sana Vitalis, who is currently working on an honours dissertation at the moment uh, with Associate Professor Willis. Uh, looking deep dive into the, uh, to the public service within New Zealand. Her son is an incredibly uh, uh, accomplished student and I I'd love to hear uh, her journey. Um, so if you could just tell us a little bit about where you came from, what are you doing, what do you want to go to next? Um, hello everyone, um, I'm Sana 
and I was originally from Wellington and I came down to study in Otago. Um, what made me choose Otago was mainly the vibes of the place, you know, like how many universities can you come down and be like a five minute walk away from your house to on being on campus. And I think what made me stay was um, the people and that is also obviously the amazing faculty we have and in the sense that you can form personal relationships with the faculty members and also the incredible other students that you have to work with you. So, I mean, Lydia is a great example of that. And um, in terms of where Laura and Otago can take you, there are so many different community um, programs that you can be a part of. I've been lucky enough to be a part of quite a few of the ones that Marcelo has already mentioned. And um, I can just honestly take you places that you didn't even think of when you started. Like I didn't know that I'd be interested in public law and here I am writing a dissertation on it with Ed Willis. So yeah, some really cool stuff available for you when you come to Otago Law School. What are you planning to do next year, Simon? Um, next year I'm actually taking a gap year and then I'll be working at Buttle Finlay in Wellington. Another excellent law firm within New Zealand. Uh, thank you so much. This is, these are real people. These, this is you in five years, folks. This is, this is not the distant future. You, you, you look at me and you see old man time, and fair enough, but these folks are doing what you will be doing in five years, and that's why we get them along just to hear, hear a little bit more about their experience. Uh, Sana went to Unicorn. Whereabouts did you go, Lydia? Did you, do, did you go, you went to Ardana? We have remarkable halls within uh, Otago. If you don't know about them already, then you know that they are an integral part of the whole first year experience, and that's where that community starts. So where could law take you? Well, Ada is uh, the pathway, the passage, the track to success, or at least a route from law school to the wider community. And we have plenty of examples here of uh, courageous Toida who have gone on to do amazing things. Uh, Andrew Rowe, uh, right here, uh, went from Otago to the Supreme Court as a clerk, then to Harvard, and now works for uh, the Innocence Project, fighting for people who have had miscarriages of justice uh, in the US. Uh, we have all of these scholars within um, Otago that can actually show you the, the pathway to reform and changing society for the better. Matidia already referred to Ahorangi Professor Jacinta Rudu, who is a first year lecturer, so you get to expose to this greatness from the get go. By greatness, I mean literally the best lecturer in the country, winner of the Prime Minister's Supreme Teaching Award a couple of years back. Um, her amazing research within the bijural uh, education that's going on right this minute is some of the most important that we've seen in the country. Bridget Toy Cronin, huh, another 101 lecturer who is engaged in some remarkable work in terms of access to justice. Nicola Peart, uh, who is just on the brink of retiring actually from Otago, but has done remarkable work within relationship property. Uh, and Andrew Geddes, who you can find talking the talk on RNZ most mornings, but actually is engaged in an electoral reform project right now at the moment. Our lecturers are teaching you by day and by night usually changing the world as well. We are uh, full of and replete with expertise um, and inspiration. These are where some of our alumni have come to. We had our 150th anniversary a couple of weeks ago, Otago Law, and it was remarkable to see the alumni that came back. And the alumni that we've got right now at the moment include uh, Justice Christine French, who sits on the Court of Appeal. In fact, the majority of Court of Appeal judges at the moment are Otago grads, if you can believe it. We have the Solicitor General of New Zealand, Una Jagos, who is um, a remarkable uh, advocate for the, the government and is the government's top lawyer, essentially. Um, a remarkable set um, of alumni. And yeah, they're just lawyers, sure, but we also have um, a, a diverse range of alumni. So Steve uh, Jugovic, who is the CEO of Kiwi Bank, for example, just showing that essentially we have the capacity as lawyers to do all sorts of things, not just become lawyers, but help out within business, wider society, uh, do whatever we wish. Remarkable um, folk continuing. Uh, so for example, Charlotte Grenfield here uh, is a journalist uh, for Reuters. Um, Warren Alcock on the left hand side uh, here is a sports lawyer. Um, there are so many opportunities to do a range of diverse things once you graduate. It's not just about becoming a lawyer, it's about being part of that community 
in a wider sense, being part of society and helping out in that way. To help you get there, we have unparalleled career support, CV workshops, so much course advice to ensure that you are making the right decisions throughout, inviting law firms and other uh, organizations to come in and pitch their wares to ensure that you find a job. And that seems to be pretty successful given that 99% of our graduates are either in further study or employment um, straight after law school. This is an easy decision in my mind, but I know that it's a big one as well. And so we are here and we will remain around for a little bit to answer your questions. If you're from the other the room, come and say hi, we'd love to see you. But here's the thing, here's the final pitch. What did I say at the start? Two things, law, then law at Otago. Why do law? Because you understand society and can help it out as well. Remarkable skills that you get from doing a law degree. So go do it. And why should you do it here? Because of the community. Folks would love to have you, uh, but thank you for your time uh, so far, and we wish you all the very best for the rest of the day. Ka kite.